Hey, what's up? I want to talk about uh, my visit yesterday with the C-Store I was telling you guys about. If you watched my video I uh, posted to YouTube yesterday. Um, and, uh, you know, this, this goes back and relates to what C-Store Secrets is talking about. But um, it's very important you realize that, you know, making money in the C-Store industry can be fairly simple. And many times it comes down to doing things that really don't cost you anything. They don't cost you any money. They don't cost you any time. Um, but let's be clear. I wanna walk you through the process of me stopping at this C store and the expectation that I had and the reality that um, was there. So we'll just call this the C store secrets test. Um, so first and foremost, I was coming off the interstate in Tennessee, I-40 West, and when I pulled off the interstate, part of the reason I pulled off this particular exit was because I saw a pilot and a shell and a, I think it was Sudden Service or Mapco sign. Um, pulled off the exit, and the first thing that I saw when I pulled off the exit because I had to use the restroom was a just a white looking I believe it was a sit go gas station directly across from me across from the exit and when I immediately saw this gas station the first thing that I noticed was on the outside the look of the building and I could tell when I saw this building a it was not a large chain and it was not a well-kept gas station. Uh, you could tell by just looking at it, and that's the same process that customers go through whenever they pull off the interstate and decide where they're gonna go. The second thing I noticed as I came up off the uh, exit ramp and was looking at going to this gas station, now, and I will tell you originally, my intent was to go possibly to the Pilot or the Mapco or the Shell, one of those, depending on uh, how easy of the access was to get into those parking lots and to get into those buildings. That was my original intent. But when I pulled off this exit, I thought, you know what, let's give this, this gas station a chance. Let's see what they have. They may even be a potential customer for me. So as I pull over into the left lane to go to this gas station and I'm peeking at this store, um, the C-Store, then I start to notice that the parking lot's not very well kept. There's not a lot of cars in this parking lot. And, you know, the time is about 8.30, 8.45. Um, and there probably should be a little traffic in this parking lot, but it's, it's a ghost town. And I'm seeing some of these other these other stations, gas stations that are off this exit. They have they have business, they have traffic, they have people there. This one doesn't. There is one big giant white truck just sitting there. Um, big Chevy truck or something. I don't know, just a pickup truck. But so again, I'm seeing this. I'm seeing there's not a whole lot of traffic. So in my mind, just like when I pick out restaurants, you know, when you pick a restaurant out, a lot of times, especially local restaurants, you can tell how good of a restaurant they are by how many cars are in the parking lot. So this is just this, the, the psychological process or the thought process that many people will go through as they pick a, a place to stop and take their family. So I'm seeing all these things. So first off, some of the things that I talk about in C-Store Secrets, the red flags are going up. I already know that based on what I'm seeing on the outside of this C-Store, there's a good possibility that A, the restrooms are gonna be dirty or smelly. B, they're not gonna have a full selection of a lot of good new items and, and fresh items. C, there's a good chance they're not gonna have a very strong coffee bar. And granted, I hadn't had my second cup of coffee for that morning. Um, D, they probably weren't gonna be friendly. They probably weren't gonna care about me or my business. E, they were probably gonna have out-of-date product. 
And I mean, I, there's 26 letters in the alphabet. And I'm only on the fifth one. So I mean, I can go on for a while. And again, that's what Sea Store Secrets talks about. These are the things that I have polled and asked your potential customers time and time again. And I keep getting these things over and over again. And I've been seeing this for 18 years and that's why I'm sharing this video with you. So I'm going through this process. I decided, you know what, I'll pull in there anyway. And, and you know, as far as ease of access, this gas station is sitting in the perfect space for me to cross traffic one time as a traveler and be able to get back onto the interstate very easily. So when I come off of an exit, that's what I'm looking at. If I'm just traveling, I'm just stopping to take a pee break, maybe grab a drink. I'm looking at how many times do I have to cross traffic? How many times or how easy is it to get back on the interstate so I can get back into travel? Do I got to cross traffic twice? How much time is it going to cost me? All these different factors. And then going back to the things that I was seeing on this C store, that's how I pick where I'm going to stop is, is it clean? Does it look clean? Because a lot of times, and that's part of the point to this video is you can tell what the experience is going to be like just by seeing the outside of this building. All right. So continuing on with the story, I did not pull into a pump. That's one thing that I do. If I'm not getting gas, I don't block any pumps. I want, you know, other customers to be able to have access to those. So I pull far away from the building over by a curve where I know I can get back out easily and there's plenty of clearance for anybody else to come in. Matter of fact, I'm probably parked where maybe a small delivery truck would wanna pull in at just to stay out of the way. So, I walk in the store and I look to my left immediately, that's where the coffee bar is. So, first thing I notice, it is summer. The slushy machine completely shut down, nothing in it. One coffee machine one three head cappuccino machine. May have been a four or a five, but I'm pretty sure it was a three. That's it. So I already know I'm not getting coffee there. They don't have their machine on. That means they don't care about their equipment. That means they don't care about having products. So the red flags are going up. I walk straight across the front counter and I'm just kind of looking around, just seeing what I you know, might want snack wise. I hadn't had breakfast yet might want to get a granola bar or something like that. I do try to eat a healthy breakfast. And I walk down the candy aisle. Uh, bar candies on my left, peg candies on my right. Granted, what could be the owner of the store is staring at me. Never said hello, never said hi. Um, the, the person from the white truck was playing lottery maybe or something like that. Um, he had went started out the door So cashier wasn't busy Never spoke. I turned right down the candy aisle Looking at the boxes as I walk down the aisle some of them are flipped upside down Some of them are empty several of them are empty empty holes um, On the right the pegs only one or two peg candies on there they're on 12 inch pegs. If you're not gonna keep that much product, I definitely recommend six inch pegs. Um, some of them are fronted, some of them are back, some of them, are there. it's all over the place. It's, it's, it's a mess. Um, as far as I can tell, it's not organized at all. So my expectations, there's a, there's a couple more red flags. Again, things that I talk about in C-Store Secrets. So I haven't even got to the restroom yet and I'm already thinking, you know what? This is probably not going to be good. Probably not going to be good. So I finally get to the restroom. The light's off. I turn the light on. And the urinal is right beside the sink. And again, I had to pee. So I pee. Um, and while I'm peeing, I notice that the hand dryer is above the urinal. Now, I'm no expert on hand dryers. But I do believe and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but they pull air from inside the building. Uh, they, they have that opening on the bottom of them. A lot of time that, that I believe they pull air from the inside. So I look under it while I'm peeing and there's like, it's not mold, but it's very dirty up under that. Now, how does that stuff get there? Is it is it splash from the urinal? Is it 
you know, feces from the air. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it's dirty and it's above the urinal. So anytime you wash your hands, it's, it's going to suck up that air. It's going to blow air down. Not good. I don't like it. Most customers may or may not pay attention to that, but I do. So I'm also wondering if there is any hand soap. I'm also looking for paper towels. Now, they did have hand soap, so I did get to wash my hands, but I, I did not dry my hands. So I walked around the store for a minute, and by the way, don't let me forget, it smelled like an unflushed toilet in there. You know, if you don't flush your toilet for multiple hours and people keep using the restroom in it, that's what it smelled like in there. It smelled like raw sewage. Uh, not like so bad that it would overwhelm you, but enough that you would not want to go back. Uh, so I go around, walk around the store, I'm trying to dry my hands because they didn't have hand towels. And so I'm looking around, trying to find out what I'm going to drink, whatever. This store was heavily focused on alcohol. Uh, their non-alcoholic selection was very slim. Uh, most of their non-alcoholic selection was in stand-up um, coolers, not in their open-air cooler uh, or their walk-in cooler. So, you know, I don't drink pop. I don't drink a lot of those things or soda or whatever you want to call it. So I'm looking for, you know, a, an aha or a bubbly, some kind of sparkling water. And part of the reason why I was going to buy a drink is if I stop, common courtesy, you've let me use your facilities. I want to, I want to at least buy something to pay you back for that courtesy. And granted, my experience wasn't very good. So I was definitely willing to leave without purchasing anything. Uh, I came out of the store or out of the restroom. I'm, I'm looking around trying to decide if I'm going to buy something or what to buy since the customer or the, the store owner, whoever did let me use uh, the facilities. And the, the person behind the register is still staring at me like I'm a thief. And granted, I mean, I understand you don't want people to steal, but I definitely don't look like a thief. Um, so I feel like their eyes are just on me, still haven't spoke to me. Uh, so I'm looking around. I finally find a sparkling water after circling the store about two times. And so I go pick one up and I'm thinking, ah, oh, Dasani blood orange. I've never had that, but I do like orange. Let's give it a shot. So I pick it up, check the date on the bottom of the can. It's out of date. Now it's not out of date by long. It probably would have been okay. It was maybe 20 days. Um, but it's out of date. So what does that tell me? A product that's out of date in your store tells me, A, you don't check your dates. B, you possibly don't rotate your product. C, if you're not checking dates, you really don't care about me and my experience in your C store. You don't care. So if you don't care about my experience, you don't care about me, you don't care about my money, you don't care about my kids, you don't care about my wife, you don't, you don't care about making sure that my stop goes in a positive direction or format. That's what, okay, so, so if you don't care about my experience, should I care about yours? You know, I've talked to a lot of C-store owners, you know, they get mad when customers come in and make messes, um, pick up product and leave it where they, don't leave it where they found it. You know, if they pick up a, a candy bar and they leave it in the grocery aisle or something, they decide they don't want to buy. That, you know, it's, it happens. Customers do that stuff, but um, it's your job, you know, to be checking your shelves and do that. But um, this is, again, just trying to describe to you my customer experience. So the blood orange is out of date. So I, I put it back. I pull a can because this is a this is a stand up cooler, so I reach back and I pull a can about you know seven eight cans back, probably from the same case, but just to give the benefit of the doubt. And guess what? Same day. So I'm thinking, all right, fine. I'll try the cherry. There was another flavor um, next to it, so I pull it. It was out of date, eh, a little further. So once again solidifying in my mind the store didn't look like that it cared about its customers when i pulled off the interstate it didn't look like um it was going to have a great selection 
I go inside and all doubt is removed. They don't care. So I look over my shoulder and I did walk the store another time and the owner or the cashier is still staring at me. Still. Still has not spoke. Never spoke to me. So I, at this point, I was looking for a granola bar and I was just gonna maybe try a regular water. Didn't really have a selection on the regular granola bars. Definitely, I didn't see any new items. 100% um, focused on lottery and beer, obviously. And those aren't even high profit items. So I left. Never bought anything, never spoke to me, I left. Matter of fact, the only person that spoke to me was that per that man, that the gentleman that was in the white truck. He came back in the store to buy some more lottery and uh, said, hey, or something like that. So not only did the owner not speak to me, the only person that spoke to me was maybe a local or a customer. So my point is, is if you follow along with everything that I told you about this experience, this is exactly why I wrote Sea Store Secrets. All of these things are small things that you can take care of as a sea store owner so that people will come to your business. And I wanna finish this story with this. How many of those experiences do you think, especially local people, will have before they stop coming? Because you think about it, there was a pilot and a sudden service or Mapco right next door, right next door. So one reason that I wrote Sea Store Secrets is if you are that store owner and you don't take care of this, it's only a matter of time before your profits dwindle, your sales dwindle, and you know what's gonna happen? You're gonna sell the store and potentially lie about the sales just to get out of it, or you're gonna have to shut your doors. Now, I want all Sea Stores to succeed, to profit, and to win. I don't care if you're a chain or an independent. But what I'm telling you is, is that if you don't start doing these things that we talk about in the Sea Store Secrets book, and that, that you know, I, the reason I share these videos, then it's only a matter of time before your business is in jeopardy. And let's throw in there COVID. Let's throw in there the fact that things are kind of in limbo, sort of, We've had a shutdown, we may experience another one. This is the thought process, this is the things that your customers go through in deciding if they're gonna stop at your store. And so these are the things that you have to pay attention to. All my life I've wanted to speak up and speak out to C-store owners everywhere, but I was always afraid that you did not want to hear this message, that you did not want to hear the things that could possibly make you more money and make you more profit because I was afraid that it would offend you. And I'm at the point now where I've gotten over that fear because I know that if I share this information, it will help you. And that's why I make these videos. If you will listen to me, I know it will help you. Put your feelings aside, put your years of experience aside, put all that aside, open your mind and just say, and ask yourself that question. What is it that my customers or potential customers want so that they will come to my C-Store? What is it that they want? So once again, I have a free Facebook group you can join. I have a book that you can you know, purchase that will give you all these things in detail and I'm actually motivated to, to help with your Facebook and all these things. I've got some programs that are free programs um, that will help you to market to your customers. I actually have a bonus chapter in the book, chapter number eight, that talks about if you are doing these things that I tell you not to do, how you can overcome that and bring those customers back and let them know that you've made a change. So I just wanna help. I just wanna help you succeed. I wanna help you get into food service if that's what you um, are looking for right now and you definitely need to do it. It's something we talk about in the book. Uh, but I wanna help you succeed. So 
If you have any questions, concerns, comments, look me up, See Store Secrets. If you're seeing this video, odds are you've probably seen my Facebook page or my Instagram page. Reach out, let's help, let's connect, let's help you and your community succeed and, and make more money and win and profit. That's, that's my goal, that's what I'm here for. So please reach out, join me, See Store Secrets, book.com. Um, or, or, or look me up on any platform, you know, Google search, whatever. Let's connect. Let's help each other. Let's help you, your family, your cousins, your brothers, anybody you know. Let's help you get out of the way so that customers can come in, have a great experience, and spend money. Have a great day.